a counter is a register that goes through a specific state sequence. So an n-bit binary counter counts from 0 to 2 to the n minus 1 in binary. An up counter uh, is a counter where the binary value increases by 1. A down counter is a binary value. Uh, the binary value decreases by 1 at every step. Um, so let's start. Let's build such a, a system. And we can essentially start from the state diagram for a 3-bit binary up counter. And it sort of looks something like this, right? The states are, let's just use the state name, 000, 001, 0, 0, 010, 011, 100, 101, 110, 111, 111. And in a counter, this is sort of a periodic process, so you just cycle through these states infinitely and every tra there's no inputs here so every transition just always happens that's why I'm going to put this star on the arrow okay and so our next goal is to essentially design the combinational circuit that realizes this um, state machine and of course one way to go about this is to just write down the state table so we have present state um, 2, present state 1, present state 0, next state 1, uh, sorry, next state 2, next state 1, next state 0. So if we go, if we're in state 0, 0, 0, we're going to go to state 0, 0, 1, state 0, 0, 1, to state 0, 1, 0. Um, sorry, I made a mistake here, so this should be 0, 0, 1 up here. But you get the idea. And then, of course, I'm not going to write this out, but if you take this state table and you solve the k-maps, you can essentially derive expressions for uh, next state 0, next state 1, next state 2, and these expressions are going to look something like this. So I actually recommend that you do this. So next state 0 is just going to be not present state 0. Next state 1 is going to be present state 1 x or present state 0 and next state 2 is equal to present state present state 2 sorry let me write this more nicely present state 2 x or present state 1 and present state 0 and in fact if you had an, an n bit counter it would just continue like that, such that next state i would be equal to present state i x or the product of all the lower um, bit states, lower order bits. ps present state i minus 1 down to present state 0. OK? So you can convince yourself, at least for the 3-bit counter, you can convince yourself that this is true by solving um, the, the k-maps. You can also just look at the state diagram that I've, uh, that I've drawn on the previous slide. And you can actually convince yourself it's very easy to see that next state 0 equals not present state 0. It's true because the first, the bit, the lowest order bit just flips from one number to the next one. Uh, you can maybe also see that next state 1 is the xor of ps1 and ps0 becomes a little less obvious as you go to higher order bits, but it's fairly intuitive. And even if it's not intuitive, it's still something you've seen many times, namely write down a state diagram, solve, write down the state table, solve the k-map, get the circuit. So now if you were to um, build such a system, and actually maybe you want to do something that's a little more complicated rather than just to mean you've building the, the counter by itself, you kind of want to make it a complex binary counter where you can switch between different modes. So you might want to be able to upload data into your counter. You might want to actually count. You might want to reset um, or just hold information as, as it is. I mean, this is it's clear that if you have a counter, sometimes you want to start counting again. That's when you use reset. Maybe you don't want to start counting from 0, but from some fixed value. That's why you might um, load in 
some, uh, some, some number to begin with, etc. And of course, you've seen just in the last video how you would realize um, a system where you have such choices. And I'm going to draw this for you now briefly. So I've pre-drawn this here. So this is, of course, a structure you're, rec or you're recognizing, right? So this is a, a register, in this case, with that can hold four, a four-bit value. It's a controlled register since there's this um, sort of set of multiplexers that control which data from which of these wires gets copied into the actual um, uh, flip-flops. And then there's different types of operations that I can do. So for 0, 0, I'm holding, so I'm just going to take the value, so called C for count here. I'm just going to put it back, uh, holding the current value that I'm holding, I'm just going to put it back into the system. So this is C0, C1, C2, C3. So whatever value is held comes back into, um, into the input. Now, for 0, 1, I want to do up count, and we've just on the previous slide, sort of introduced how we do counting. So the first, next, we said that next state 0 is always the inverse of present state 0. So this would be not C0 that comes in here. Um, next state 1 was the XOR of present state 0 and present state 1. Then next day two, or all the higher order bits, was essentially an XOR of, in this case, uh, next uh, current state or present state two. XOR together with a product of C1 and C0. So this is C2. And here I have an AND gate of C1 and C0. And this continues, um, of course, in the same type of structure up here. So I have another XOR. Sorry, I'm going to redraw this because it's not so pretty. An XOR of C3 and then and it together C1, C2, and C0. OK, so that's the counter. Now if I set my controls load to 1, count to 0, then of course um, I'm resetting. So I'm going to put zeros here. And finally, if I'm setting load and count to 1, I'm loading in a new number in parallel. So this number is P3, P2, P1, P0. OK? So again, this is kind of makes the point this of that sort of combining or using multiplexers, you can build these controlled systems where you get, depending on the situation, you get to react in different ways. You get to make different choices um, about what your register is going to do at a given time. And this, in this particular instance, counting up is one of the choices that you have. More generally, of course, you can design arbitrary sequence counters. You don't have to count up by one. So here, if you're asked to design a three-bit counter that goes through the sequence 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, et cetera, in general, the way you can approach this, of course, quite straightforward. You draw a state diagram. Then you draw the state table. You solve the K-map, and you're done. So let's briefly um, think about how you can describe uh, counters in Verilog. So this is a module that's called upcounter. Um, it has a parameter uh, width, which here is set to 8. Uh, out is an output. It's a register of width, basically um, of size width, essentially. And then increment, reset, and clock are inputs. And then what I want to do, of course, is I'm going to say always at positive edge clock, that's when something happens, begin. 
And I'm just going to go through the different cases here. So I want to build a sort of a, uh, an advanced counter where I can have a reset. So I say if reset, then I'm setting the value of out to 0. Else if, if increment is true, then I'm setting the value of out to out oops, to out plus 1. That's really the counting operation. Else, I'm just holding information, so I'm just going to set out to its own current value. And that's it. So this is using um, basic Verilog to just describe this up counter system. So it's very simple and should be kind of look all should all look quite familiar to you.